Please pray with me. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, yet distinct persons. We cannot fully understand, we cannot fully comprehend, but yet we believe. And so I pray this morning that you would come again, that you would visit us in the speaking of your word, in our hearing of it, that as we hear something that is difficult to explain, that as we even comprehend the things in life which are challenging, which challenge us to explain, pray that you would give to us faith, faith to believe, faith to believe in spite of Faith to believe despite what we see around us. Send your Holy Spirit now, that as we hear your word, we might believe it, and that by believing it, we might become doers of it. I pray and ask this all in your most holy and perfect and powerful name, Jesus. Amen. When you can't explain it, that's the title of the sermon here. What do you do? I already asked you this. When you can't explain something. I have a 10, almost 11-month-old baby girl at home. And I, this is a very common experience for me. We're sitting on the floor playing together, and she'll crawl over to something that's on the floor. Usually it's not her toy. It's some random common household item that she's never seen before. She'll crawl over to it, pick it up, Hold it in front of her, studying it so intensely like she's never seen this thing before in her entire life and she has to figure out what it is. After a few moments of that, inevitably it goes right into her mouth. It's so fascinating, intriguing, and just fun to watch her explore to crawl around, to just look at things with that inquisitive look, trying to figure out what is in front of her. And I am excited for the day when she will begin to ask that three-letter question. Why? Why, 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 why? Why this? Why that? How does this work? Why is it that way? Why are things this way, Dad? But yet... Even as someone who likes to explain everything, I know there will be times, there will be moments when even the almighty Google machine will not be able to give me an answer. Will not be able to give me the answer why. And even then, I might not be able to explain why it cannot tell me why too. In those moments, I'm not as excited for because those are challenging moments, usually. And perhaps the most unironic part of this all is that as cute, as frustrating, as sometimes annoying as it can be when then why question keeps coming over and over and over again, we too, as adults, continue to ask the question, why? We ask God the question why all the time. God, why is this happening? God, why didn't you do something? God, why is there so much suffering in the world? God, why, when I believe in you, is this what happens to me? Why don't you do something about it? Yes, we, even as adults, ask that three-letter question of God, why? But more often than not, The answer to our questions of why cannot and will not be explained in this life. And today, on Holy Trinity Sunday, the day when we talk about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's another one of these days, it's another one of these things that we just can't fully comprehend, that we can't fully explain. Just like we read in the As We Gather, today is kind of a weird and unique day. We're not talking about a specific action of God that Jesus died or was raised or the Holy Spirit came. Instead, we're talking about a doctrine, a teaching that's drawn out of Scripture. And it doesn't make sense. How can three be one, but one be three at the same time? 
How can they be co-eternal, co-equal, but yet distinct at the same time, too? We just can't comprehend it. It's hard to understand. It's hard to explain. But it begs the question of you and I, just like we've said multiple times now, what do we do, especially when it comes to questions of faith, especially when it comes to us and God? What do we do when we can't explain something? Today in our reading, in the gospel reading, we get to see two examples of uh, ways that we try to usually deal with it, but aren't very helpful. And then Jesus gives to us, shows us one faithful way to respond to answer this question. He invites us, he even gives to us the faith to believe the unbelievable. So the first reaction here, the first reaction of the people that are in front of Jesus is to just dismiss it as though it's not true, as though it's a lie entirely. The Pharisees, the Judeans, have been listening to Jesus now for a little bit. Our reading is part of a longer interaction with them. He's been talking to them now for a while. And as they continue to listen to Jesus' words, they're continuing to say, that doesn't make sense. How could that be? Why? How could it be that way? Why is it that way? And what they conclude is that he must be lying. He's not telling the truth. Some of the questions they're asking at this point, how are you the light of the world, Jesus? How are you going to go away from us in a way that we can't follow you? How are we slaves to sin? And from our reading today, how can you say that people will never die? How do you know the Father? How have you been able to see Abraham? They hear all of these very difficult, unexplainable words of Jesus, and because they can't make sense of them, because they can't understand them, they say, well, then Jesus, you must be a liar. But can we really blame them? We might be tempted to say and think that, well, we wouldn't respond that way, that we would believe, that we would actually trust what Jesus has said, But think back to those same questions that we often ask in our life, too. Those questions of why. How often has a family suffered hardship? Whether that's physical, emotional, financial. And they lose the desire to go to church. That you lose the desire to be among God's people in his presence. Because they can't explain why they have faith in a God who provides who loves and cares, but yet in their own life, they don't see it. And so they're driven to unbelief. Or how often does a mother lose one of her children and is too driven to disbelief because she reads in the scriptures that God loves her and all of her children and protects them looks into her life and say, this isn't true for me, so it must not be real. There are moments and times in you and I, in our life together, where we are just like the Judeans and the Pharisees here. We see, we hear the words of Jesus, but we look around in the world, we look around in our own lives, and we see something we can't explain. And so we just say, well, and it's just not true. While that might not be our response all the time, we might be tempted to dismiss his words. Our real temptation, the one that we fall into the most, is to have an explanation for everything, to make reason and logic the most important thing, the most important part of our faith. The Jewish people do this in our lesson today. They've talked to Jesus, they've seen the miracles, or at least they've heard about them, and they compile everything they can into this bucket, and then they take out a conclusion and say, well, here we go. This is what must then be true. And what do they conclude? They say, well, you must be a demon. It sounds kind of outlandish to us, We don't go around walking and telling people, well, you have a demon, you have a demon, you have a demon. It's not part of our culture. It's kind of strange to hear that happening. But they didn't get it just from anywhere. 
This was part of their teaching. This was part of their religion, part of their culture. They looked at what they saw. They listened to his words. They were taking the evidence that they had. And this is the conclusion they made. That if this guy who was challenging their teachers, challenging their people of authority, that this person who was saying that the fathers of the faith were somewhat off or somewhat wrong, that the people before them had not followed after the Father, the God, were incorrect, that no faithful Jewish person would ever say something like that. And so then that person, well, they weren't in. They were out. They must have had a demon. And while we don't say that, while we don't call people demons or say that they do have them, we do do what they do in that very thing. We take everything that we know, we take those things that we see, and we try and create stories. We try and create meaning out of what happens to us. So then, we begin to tell ourselves That in the midst of those moments when we ask the question, why, that, well, we should have prayed more. We should have had more faith. That we should have gave more. We should have done something more so that then maybe this just wouldn't have happened. But when we're confronted with something that we can't explain, we do this. We make these stories up. But more often than not, We do more harm to ourselves and to those around us than we do trying to lead people to Jesus. So then what are we to do? If we're not to dismiss Jesus' words as a lie, if we're not to just make up some logical explanation, what is a faithful response? Jesus gives us what that faithful response is a few verses before our reading for the day. He's talking to some people, the same group of people who are questioning him, who are doubting him, just a few words before us. And when they don't believe what he's saying, he says these words to them. He says, But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the word of God or obeys the word of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Jesus tells the people gathered there that the faithful response to something that they cannot understand, that they cannot explain, is not to dismiss it, not to use logic or reason to come up with some sort of glamorous expectation or explanation. Instead, Jesus says the faithful response is to just be okay, to not be able to explain it, to just have faith. Jesus doesn't say, I tell you the truth, but you need to look for evidence around you that it's actually true. Instead, Jesus says, Look, these are my words, and my word is true. Whether you understand it or not, the faithful response is to believe it, even when it doesn't make sense. Jesus says that faith without faith is dead. He says it's okay to not be able to understand, to be able to explain everything. He says that we cannot, that we should not even be able to explain every single thing. What Jesus says is very similar to what maybe some of you have even done when that little kid comes up to you and says, why, why, why? Use those three words, those three powerful words, Because I said so. Four words. Sorry, I can't count, I guess. Because I said so. Except, it's different with Jesus. Well, we may use that as the end of our rope because we're tired, because we don't want to give an explanation, because we don't know and we don't want to say, I don't know. When Jesus says it, it's different. When Jesus says, because I said so, it happens. Because what Jesus says 
happens. His word never returns void. When he says to us something difficult and challenging, when we can't understand it, when we ask the words, why, and Jesus says, because I said so, when we ask him, Lord, that's difficult. That's unbelievable. He sends his Holy Spirit to you to give you the faith you need to believe. Even if it doesn't make sense. Even if you can't understand why it's that way. And so on this day, this Holy Trinity Sunday, when we comprehend, when we try and comprehend a doctrine that is difficult, is challenging, is unexplainable, we take comfort, we have peace, but most of all, we have faith. Because Jesus has spoken, and Jesus' word is always true. So as you go from here today into life, whatever you may face, as you go to have questions asked of you, as you go to ask questions yourself, the next time you come across something that you cannot understand, the next time you come across a moment when you don't know the answer, say this. Say a prayer. Say, Jesus, in this moment, give me the faith I need to believe the un believable. Jesus, in this moment, give me the faith I need to believe the unbelievable, and he will give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen.